Hello, and welcome to Modern Scuba's YouTube channel. So this was a presentation I had to put together for a instructor class I took. This was not designed for divers. This was more for general teaching and opening the eyes of some other cops as to what goes on in diving. So this is going to be my presentation on diving's physics, primarily dealing with Boyle's Law. So as some of you may know, Boyle's Law basically states at a constant temperature, the absolute pressure and volume of a gas are inversely proportional. Now the temperature part goes into Charles' Law, but we call it all boils. As pressure increases, the volume of a gas is reduced, and as the pressure is reduced, the volume of a gas increases. So according to the U.S. Navy Dive Manual, Boyle's Law is important to divers because it relates to change in the volume of a gas caused by the change in pressure due to depth, which defines the relationship of pressure and volume in breathing gas supplies. Basically, this is something that you should have seen in Open Water 1, where as you go down, the pressure increases and the volume of gas decreases. If you're at the bottom and you have a full volume of gas, as you go up, the gas overflows, so on and so forth. So here is basically that in a chart. If you start at zero feet, that is zero relative atmospheres, that is one atmosphere absolute. Relative pressure is zero, absolute is about 14.7. And then I've got two columns for ascent and descent volumes based on the depths of here. We go down to 99 feet, which is pretty common for most divers to max her out around. Uh, so every 33 feet you have a new atmosphere and as every atmosphere you go down you increase 14.7 psi whether you're calculating off of relative or absolute. So at the surface you have relative of zero atmospheres and relative zero psi or psig. In the absolutes, you have one atmosphere absolute ATA, or 14.7 PSIA. So every atmosphere of pressure is 14.7 feet, and every 33 feet you go down is another atmosphere. At 33 feet, ambient absolute pressure doubles from 14.7 to 29.4 PSIA. So that's your first atmosphere change, you double. Doubling of the absolute pressure from surface to 33 is the most significant change you will encounter in diving. So that is actually the double, doubling and the halving of pressures. You can notice this by what's called the squeeze. You'll feel it in your mask, you'll feel it in your ears. If you're wearing a dry suit, you'll start feeling it in your dry suit. The squeeze does occur at all depths and is relative to the pressure differential between the two air spaces. So the differential between surface and 33 feet being your greatest change, but all the, all the changes will make a little bit of squeeze. While ascending, the ambient pressure decreases. So if you take one cubic foot of air at 33 feet or one atmosphere down, as you bring it to the surface, it'll become two atmospheres uh, or become two cubic feet of air at the surface because your atmosphere is halved. So your density is now changed from double density at 33 feet to standard density at the surface. Which is why it is always important to always breathe. Never hold your breath. In fact, most of the time that is taught as the number one rule of diving. Never hold your breath. The air in your lungs will expand as you go up. If you hold your breath at 33 feet and come up, the volume in your lungs will double. Your lungs probably aren't stretchy enough to make up for that doubling of volume and you'll probably end up with what's called a pneumothorax. So next we're going to get into a little bit of buoyancy using Archimedes principle. And basically the way that I look at it is if an object weighs less than the water it displaces, it floats. If the object weighs more than the water it displaces, it sinks. So if it's heavier than the amount of water it displaces, boom, it goes to the bottom. If it's lighter than the amount of water it displaces, it floats. So for buoyancy, salt water weighs approximately 64 pounds per cubic foot. 
and fresh water is right around 62 and a half pounds per cubic foot. Salinity, temperature, a lot of stuff makes that vary a little bit, but I've never needed to be more accurate than 64 pounds in salt water and 62 in fresh. So one cubic foot of air at the surface, assuming salt water, will float 64 pounds. However, whenever you take that same cubic foot of air to 33 feet, now it only floats 32 pounds. And at 66 feet, it will float 21 and third pounds. And at 100 feet, it will only float about 16 pounds. While you still have the same quantity of air, its density is now increased and its volume that it's de displacing has de decreased. So back to diving pressures, inversely, if you take a lift bag that's a quarter full with one cubic foot at 100 feet, it'll float 64 pounds. However, as you surface, it's going to constantly increase. And finally, when you hit the surface, that one cubic foot at 100 feet is now going to float 256 pounds. So you're going to ascend much quicker, so you're not, you're not maintaining the neutral buoyancy in that. So Dalton's Law is another interesting one in diving physics. It's really something that you're going to see a lot more when you get into mixed gases, such as nitrox or trimix. Basically, all of the percentages of a gas add up to 100%. And the normal air that you breathe, we're at around 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen, and 1% trace gases. This is interesting just because when you get into doing mixed gases, you're going to change that level. And it also relates back to some of the atmosphere absolutes to figuring out what levels of oxygen are safe at what depths. Because breathing air that we're at is safe to, I believe it's 190 feet-ish. And after that, you start running into trouble with breathing air. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this short presentation. This is one I had to do for a class, and I figured I could share it. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to see more content like this, let me know. I really, I really like the way that Dan South Africa does this type of content, so I'm going to try to do some more like this. Thank you, and have a great day.